Hello and welcome to episode 3 of How to Code Games in BBC Basic. In this episode we're going to be taking a closer look at Mode 7. So in order to make sense of what is happening in lines 110 to 420 of Cosmic Invaders, we will need to spend a little bit of time understanding the different graphics modes that are supported by the BBC Micro. These modes are really just a way of managing how much memory is pre-allocated to the graphical display. Some modes are text only, such as modes 3 and 6, meaning that they don't require as much memory pre-allocation up front, so just 16k for mode 3 and 8k for mode 6. Both of them support just two colours, and they differ only really in terms of how many text characters can fit onto a single line, as well as the number of lines of text that can fit onto the screen before scrolling. Other modes support both text and graphics, and they're generally more expensive than the rest, memory-wise. Their cost is based on a combination of the number of colours and the screen resolution size, which is measured in terms of width and height, as well as the individual size of the, each pixel. So, for example, in mode 1, you can have just four different colours simultaneously, but with a fairly generous screen size of 320 by 256 and a minimum 4x4 square-shaped pixel. In mode 2, by contrast, you can use up to 16 different colours simultaneously, but with a somewhat reduced screen canvas of 160 by 256 and a larger oblong-shaped 8x4 pixel. Now, both modes use a whopping 20k of the Beeb's total 32k memory, with one offering better graphical precision and definition offset by a smaller colour palette, and the other offering much greater colour variety, but at the expense of a somewhat chunkier aesthetic. Now, Mode 7, the mode in which Cosmic Invaders has been written, is really in a class all of its own. It is far and away the most economical of all the available modes, requiring just 1k of pre-allocated memory, while still being able to support a full 16-colour display of both text and graphics. Wow, what's the catch, you might be thinking? I mean, if you can get text, graphics, 16 colours, all for the price of just 1k, why would you bother with any of the other modes? Well, for starters, the graphics are somewhat constrained, as they cannot be drawn using the conventional BBC Basic plot and draw commands. Furthermore, in Mode 7, you can't use the VDU23 command to produce 8x8 user-defined characters. Instead, Mode 7 is controlled using its very own set of control characters. These control characters can be used to produce text in different colours, or to create graphics in different colours, provided that those graphics are constructed out of a rather novel concept which we shall refer to as the Sixel. Now the Sixel gets its name from the fact that it is a 2x3 rectangular block with each of its six constituent pixels either filled in or left empty. And by stitching these Sixels together, it is possible to create more complex images with a rather charming mosaic style aesthetic. Now, Mode 7 is often referred to as the Teletext mode because it is precisely this display mode that was used to render the old CFAX and Teletext pages on televisions of yore. So for younger viewers, this was a pre-internet information portal that was beamed into homes throughout the UK via your TV. Teletext had it all. Television listings, weather forecasts, news, sports fixtures, horoscopes, competitions, even a quiz game called Bamboozle. Now, teletext pages were largely text-based, but they did also include graphics, all of which were rendered using the Sixel technique. So, now that we've unpacked what Mode 7 is all about, in the next video we're going to explore how it is used in practice within Cosmic Invaders to create all of the sprites and the graphics that the game requires. I hope you found this an informative introduction to the world of Mode 7, and that you'll join me for the next video in the series when we start to see how Mode 7 is actually used. Until the next time, goodbye.